So I'm now ready to start processing the sample of input data that I've got. The, the first step of processing is, uh, is loading the data into PIG into the format that we can manipulate it and run queries on that. Uh, to do that, you use the, the load command. Basically, the load command uh, processes a, a input file or set of input files, and it basically loads the data into a, a bag. That, that's Pig's notion of a, of a table. Uh, within the bag, uh, Pig has tuples and elements of tuples, and that's basically its notion of rows and columns. And so to, to load, we're going to use a loader called the text loader that basically loads every, every line of the source as a full column. And so we're not going to be doing any separation of the, of the different fields within the data to start with. So, so I've typed my command. Uh, you see we're using the text loader. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is we're, we, we name the schema. Uh, we, we call it a uh, line char array. So we're basically giving it, giving a name to our single element of our tuple. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is just view what PIG is actually doing as far as processing. And to do this, PIG gives a command uh, called the illustrate command. What, what the illustrate command does is it basically runs on a very small sample of your input data, normally just a few lines of your source file, and then it, it gives you the, shows you the pipeline of a processing being, that's being done to create that bag. So here I'm going to illustrate the raw logs bag. Uh, it'll, it'll run and it'll turn around very quickly and tell me uh, what it's doing. What we can see down here is it loads in as a byte array, then the text loader changes that into a, a char array, which is Pig's notion of a string. And we can see below that are basically the full uh, example of our, uh, our input line. And what we can see is we've got no separation here. We've just loaded the full line. So the next thing we want to do is split this line into different columns. Uh, to do that, we're going to use an, a library called the piggy bank. Uh, the piggy bank is basically a, a set of functions that are useful for doing separate, uh, different types of processing. As part of supporting PIG, what we've done for Elastic MapReduce is add some functions as far as doing text processing. And it's one of those that I'm going to use. So as far as using a function in a, the piggy bank, it's two steps. The first step is we have to register the jar with, uh, with piggy bank. It doesn't really know about it by default. To do that, I use the register command. To do that, I use the register command. Uh, the register command basically tells pig about that jar. Uh, you can see the location here is home Hadoop lib piggy bank. Uh, that's a location where we always put the piggy bank in the case of setting up uh, pig on the cluster. So you, you can always rely upon it being there. Uh, the next step is telling pig which function uh, with, within the jar we want to use. To do that, we define an alias. Uh, the, so basically, we're going to use the, the extract function. Uh, we have documentation online with full usage for this function uh, and, and how to use it. So I'm just going to type in that we're defining this alias extract uh, that, to the, the full path to the, the function within the jar. So we're now ready to use the function. Uh, Basically, what an extract does is it runs a regular expression against uh, any line of t or any string, sorry, and breaks it into the different groups that are within that regular expression match. Uh, this is a bit complicated. We have a tutor the tutorial talks a bit more about the syntax of the uh, of the regular expression we're going to use. Um, so I, I pasted in the command now. Uh, there's really two parts of it. The first part is that we're calling the function and we're, we're defining the regular expression. Uh, you see that a few of the fields are just like uh, white space separated. But then within the Apache log, some, some fields are quoted. And for those, we have to use quite a tricky regular expression uh, to match, to pull them out. Uh, after that, we've defined the schema. So we've basically given names to each of the of a, uh, columns, the groups that the regular expression is extracting. Uh, again, this is all best illustrated using the illustrate command. So we just run illustrate on the uh, logs base. And what we see, we, we see it's generated the, the earlier commands, but down below we see the final stuff for logs base. And we've now got, the, the, we see the bars here, we've now got all our separate fields, and we can see that it's run successfully on the, that first line of data, and we have our fields ready to process. So, so the job that I'm going to run on these fields is to, uh, I'm going to try and look at the, the referrers and see what, what search terms Google and Bing are using to, to uh, refer to us. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to just actually uh, split down this, this data to just the referrer column. And so to do that, I, I do another for each thing. And I just want to do for re referrer only equals for each logs base. I just want to generate the referrer. Uh,
And, and so again, the best way to see what's happening is with, uh, is with sorry, not with Dump, but with Illustrate. And now we see that it's illustrated that for our first column, uh, there, there is no referrer. It's an empty referrer just shown with a hyphen. So that, that's a little bit annoying. We don't really get a feel for the data. So, so another useful debugging thing with pig is the limit command. And uh, the way you use limit is uh, you use limit with dump. So first of all, I want to uh, limit referrer only to only return the, the first 20 lines of data. Then I use the dump command to just straight out dump every every single line within it. So this is a bad thing to do if there's thousands of lines in there. Because we've limited it to 20 lines, it'll uh, display pretty quick. And, and now we're seeing the referrer URLs. Uh, so we see lots of things don't have URLs, but, but some of them do. So what we're interested in now is in filtering down uh, our total our total thing to just the uh, the Google and, and Bing uh, URLs. So to do this, we can use a filter, a filter uh, expression. So basically now I'm filtering referrer only to things that only have a Google or a Bing match in them. Uh, again, the best way to have a look at this is to quickly uh, change our temp to now dump the filtered bag. And now we dump temp. So what we've now done is we've dumped all the Bing and Google URLs. And what we see here is uh, they all use the same, they both use the same format to specify uh, the, the search string that they're using to references. They both use this Q equals to do the reference. So what we now need to do is to use the extract function again to uh, extract everything from the, between the Q equals up until uh, the end of uh, that part of a query string. Uh, to do that, I've already prepared a, uh, a query. And I'm gonna save this to a, a bag called search terms. So once again, I can dump search terms just to see what's happening. So if I change the temp to be on search terms, and now I dump temp once again. So what we see is we're getting the search terms now, but we're also getting these empty arrays, which is just indicating uh, URLs that aren't matching the Q equals pattern. And so we just want to discount those. So for that, then we can just use another filter. So the next thing that we want to do is just to, uh, to count the number of search terms. And in particular, we want to sort by their count. Uh, so to do that, we can use the use a uh, expression which uses a, uh, a group that basically groups over, over line, over tuple, sorry, by their, uh, by their search term. And then we just want to run a count over the number of uh, expression, number of things that match each uh, thing. So that can, we can do that with this group uh, expression. So once we've got the counts, the other thing we really want to do is just sort them to make them easier to read. Uh, we do that with this, with a the combination of the order by as well as the uh, a limit instruction. So now that we've got that, uh, the, the list is much shorter, so we can just dump out the whole thing. We see we've we've got our final output, which is basically all the search terms sorted by their uh, their counts, the number of times they appear in this as referrers in this log file. Uh, now that's not totally it. What what we've done at the moment is dump it to screen, but obviously we want to save it someplace. And so what we can the way we can do that within uh, Pig is by using the uh, the the store expression. Basically, the store expression just takes a bag and a location, and it'll it'll dump it there. So here we're going to store out our search terms counted into a, a local file. Uh, it, it'll run for a few seconds and then complete. So what we now need to do is now quit out, and we we can just look at that local file uh, by cutting it out. And we see we've basically got the same results except now tab separated. So that takes us at the end up to the end of interactive mode. Uh, where we want to go from here is saving these commands to a file and then uploading it to S3 so we can easily run it on different data in the future without having to come in and do all this interactive stuff.